Yet again, in the most unsurprising news you will ever hear, the Chelsea board have acted like complete. They've acted appallingly and in an abhorrent fashion. There's no surprise, this is what they do. This is a club and this is a board who sacked Carlo Ancelotti, a double winning manager, in the tunnel at Goodison Park. This is a club who sacked Roberto Di Matteo in the November, having won a Champions League and an FA Cup the previous season. This is now a club who have sacked Chelsea's greatest ever player in his first blip. Frank Lampard is Chelsea, far more than anyone on that board. Everyone who sits on that board is an utter disgrace. And the sad thing is, the, the way that they try and portray themselves, the way that they try and act like we are, we are different, this is who they are. Do you know, I've, I've actually been in the company of a lot of people on this board and, and I've been in and around them and they have no interests for the club. They have no romanticism. They have no sentimentality about the club. It's purely a business. It's purely operated on a financial level. And the lack of respect that have been shown here to the man who captained Chelsea to a Champions League is outrageous. It's unfathomable. I, I mean, it's, uh, the, the only reason it's not unfathomable is because we've seen it all before. This is a hateful club. This is a hateful board. And everybody involved in this decision should really hang their head in shame. They've done it in the most slippery way possible. They have done it knowing full well that the Chelsea support would be irate and livid with this. And they can't allow that situation to happen, so they've done it during the lockdown. They know full well that Frank Lampard has the unilateral, partisan and aggressive support of everybody who would be in Stamford Bridge. They know that. And they have therefore acted swiftly to try and get around having to deal with that issue. They were scarred by what happened when Rafael Benitez came in. They were scarred by the footage from Griffin Park. They were scarred by the, his first game against Manchester City when he was booed onto the pitch. And they know that if they were to sack Frank Lampard, that the support in the ground would be unforgiving. So they have done it in the most appalling, slippery and sneaky way possible. Uh, I think it's so unjust. I think Frank Lampard is ultimately paying the price because Roman Abramovich's brand new toys didn't perform. Kai Havertz has been insignificant, uh, totally insignificant, and uh, Timo Werner has been borderline disgraceful. I'm not writing them off, I'm not saying they won't come good, but up until now they are the facts. And Frank Lampard is paying the price for that. Frank Lampard is ultimately being sacrificed because Roman Abramovich decided to have a spending splurge the way that he would do in Harrods or Selfridges, and he now doesn't really like what he's got, but rather than taking it out on them, rather than these players taking responsibility for themselves, of course Frank Lampard's responsible. It's, it's absolutely outrageous. And this board, this is a board who have done things like this before, and they get away with it because they spend the money and because we've seen success, they get away with it, but people need to start questioning them. Look at the way that they treated Roberto Di Matteo. Look at the way they treated Jose Mourinho, in fairness. It's outrageous. This is a club who tried to move Chelsea away from Stamford Bridge. Chelsea and Stamford Bridge are intrinsically linked. They are, one doesn't exist without the other. Peter Rosgood's ashes are buried under the shed end at Stamford Bridge in the penalty spot. And this is a club who wanted to just rip that all up, do their best to manoeuvre their way, by the way. When it was being done in a democratic fashion, the club did everything they could to scupper the democratic process. It went very much, uh, it was very much a stop the count situation is what Abramovich was trying to do. But they get away with it. And people need to start holding this board to account. People need to really start asking questions about them. Um, Frank, Frank Lampard did a really good job. I think he can hold his head up high. He took what is effectively our youth team to the FA Cup final, the last 16 of the Champions League and top four. In his first season in the Premier League. I mean, the, the Di Matteo situation was bad enough. The Mourinho situation was bad enough. But this, this is absolutely unforgivable. And the manner of it, the way in which it's been done, it's poison. The club, the epicentre of the club is poison. And to do this to Frank Lampard and to Jody Morris, who, let's remember, jo people, people forget the contribution of Jody Morris. Jody Morris grew up in, in West Kent. He grew up in the shadow of Stamford Bridge. He went on to play 200 games for the club and has contributed massively to the success of a lot of these youth players. Mason Mount isn't captaining Chelsea without the input of Jody Morris. And again, sold out, completely sold out, completely forgotten. A fellow who's had an affinity with a club for, what, 
three quarters of his life totally forgotten. It's it's just outrageous. And and ultimately now Chelsea, we're back to square one. We are now back to square one because the club, the 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 shift that the club tried to pretend that they were after, doesn't exist. You know, we're a club who's building for the future. We're a club who are investing in youth. We're a club who want a project. They're bollocks. They don't. They don't. They, they've got no interest. They've got no sentimentality about it. And they've got absolutely no romanticism. And as a result, as soon as Thomas Tuchel became available, being sacked from Paris, by the way, he was sacked because, get this, this is the best bit. Sacked, wherever he's been, this geezer, he's had big issues with the board. Where, whatever club he's been at, the board, he, he leaves... He leaves that club in a terrible sense. How do you reckon this one's going to end? I know where my money is. Um, so now what? Thomas Tuchel's going to come in. All to, all to get the best out of our German talent. Who've ultimately let down our greatest ever player. And Thomas Tuchel's being brought in as if he's some sort of oracle. Sacked from PSG. Alright, he got to a final. But Tottenham got to a final. Like, you know, there's a lot... There's a lot going on and there's a lot of context around getting a club to a final in the Champions League. It isn't simple. It isn't it isn't like he did he achieved that and, and also he didn't achieve anything. They lost. They lost in the final. So Thomas Tuchel's being brought in. He was at Dortmund, fell out at Dortmund, he was at PSG, Leonardo hates him. This has got a disaster written all over it. And I just can't understand how the club think that Thomas Tuchel coming in is somehow a better option than the project that we were part of with Frank Lampard. To sack him now makes a mockery of ever appointing him. If you're going to appoint Frank Lampard, someone who you know is going to be learning on the job. He's, you know, he's had one season in management, one season at Derby. He's going to grow with his job. Brendan Rodgers is a good example here. Brendan Rodgers is a very good manager now. He's doing very well at Leicester. He had some terrible times. I think Reading, Watford didn't go well for him, but ultimately he's become a good manager. Chelsea appointed Lampard at that point. And the point was that he was going to grow and the club were going to grow with him. There's obviously going to be rocky spells along the way. There's obviously going to be slips. But ultimately, where you end up in five, five years, in a decade, you end up in a really, really rich, healthy spot because the club feels good. They've got somebody in charge who totally adores the club. They've got somebody in charge who the fans feel an affinity with. Uh, you've got somebody who's brought through a load of young players. And the harmony around the club would be fantastic. Now what? Back to square one. Tuchel comes in. Tuchel comes in and what? 18 months. Wait, what? 24 months. Chelsea, he leaves Chelsea. Maybe we've won a couple of a couple of trophies. Maybe we haven't. But ultimately, Chelsea are back to square one. And the point of this video, the whole point and conversation that now needs to happen is, when will people, when will Chelsea fans start asking questions about this board? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of them. I'm like genuinely sick of the whole thing. Anyway, in a bit.